Good morning and welcome. It is Sunday, June 6th. It is uh, wonderful to have you here uh, joining with me uh, for a time of uh, prayer and praise and worship. Uh, a couple of things to note. Um, we have entered uh, June, of course, and that's Pride Month. And so we have um, the uh, flag behind us on the altar, uh, just reminding that uh, we are the rainbow people of God. Uh, LGBTQ, um, all races, all are welcome in, in Christ Church. And so we're glad to have you uh, join with us today. As you know, uh, top of the news of this past week has been the horrific discovery of the uh, remains of 215 children at the Kamloops uh, Residential School. Uh, and so we will be remembering them with uh, a time of silence uh, during our service. Let's begin with a moment of holy silence as we prepare ourselves to worship. I hope you've had an opportunity to download the order of service, which can be found on our on the Facebook page for this uh, service and the YouTube uh, channel as well. Our opening song this morning is Here in This Place. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I now invite you into a time of silence uh, in memory of the children who have died at residential schools, particularly the 215 uh, whose remains were discovered this past week in Kamloops. We're going to have 215 seconds of silence, uh, one second for each person.
Let us pray. This is the Remembering the Children prayer. God of our ancestors, who holds the spirits of our grandmothers and grandfathers and the spirits of our grandchildren, remembering the children, we now pledge ourselves to speak the truth and with our hearts and our souls to act upon the truth we have heard of the injustices lived, of the sufferings inflicted, of the tears cried, of the misguided intentions imposed, and of the power of prejudice and racism, which were allowed to smother the sounds and laughter of the forgotten children. Hear our cries of lament for what was allowed to happen and for what will never be. <clears throat> In speaking and hearing and acting upon the truth, may we as individuals and as a nation Meet the hope of a new beginning, great creator God, who desires that all creation live in harmony and peace. Remembering the children, we dare to dream of a path of reconciliation, where apology from the heart leads to healing of the heart and the chance of restoring the circle, where justice walks with all, where respect leads to true partnership where the power to change comes from each heart. Hear our prayer of hope and guide this country of Canada on a new and different path. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith firmly resolved to, to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord is our light and our life. O come, let us worship. Please join me in saying the Jubilate. <clears throat> be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Well, our first reading is from the book of Genesis. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, 
Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our song this, psalm of this morning is Psalm 130. Out of the depths have I called you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our gospel song is Laudate Dominum. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And the crowd came together again, so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him, and he spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, 
People will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemes they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, this past week has uh, been one filled with news of tragedy. As we've seen once more, our country and particularly the church, Christian people, facing the horrors of the residential school and that legacy in our country. It was a system designed to eradicate indigenous culture, indigenous languages, and often, so often ended up being so brutal. The discovery this past week of 215 or so children buried at the Kamloops School has shocked and it has disturbed many, and rightly so. There is pain, grief, anger, and there are many questions. Perhaps most of all, will there ever be reconciliation? Will there be healing? Today we have an iconic story from Genesis. And I'd like to look at it again. I think it may speak to our situation. God is out for a stroll in his garden. It's a remarkably casual scene as God walks along in the garden. And then we have the man and the woman, Adam and Eve. And they are hiding. So here's God looking for them as a friend. And they are hiding. They're naked and they're afraid that God will see them naked. And so God finds them, and God is upset. His reaction seems to be twofold. On the one hand, there seems to be anger, anger at their disobeying him, anger at eating from the tree they were not supposed to. But one can also sense sadness and pain in this story. Sadness and pain at that sense of betrayal, and that they would actually hide from him their creator, their friend, their father. Needless to say, and we know this, this, there is sin here. On the surface, the sin is often portrayed as being about breaking the rules. But I think there's a deeper sin here. It is a broken relationship. It is the pain that is caused to a parent, the pain that one causes to a friend. That too is sin. But perhaps the worst piece here is the evasion. The man said to God, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate. As we well know, the man and the woman both refused to take responsibility in this story. Blame is passed from one to another. The man passes it to the woman, the woman to the serpent. We've heard the story many times in our own lives. Likely we have lived it ourselves. At some point, we too have cast aside responsibility for our actions. But there's another piece to this, and this is something that struck me. Well, perhaps I'm slow-minded, but I... Uh, I'd never really thought of this before. I'm sure I've read it elsewhere. It's not original to me. But notice what the man says to God. 
the woman whom you gave to be with me. Think about that for a moment. The man is blaming God. Before he blames anyone else, he blames God. It's as if Adam is saying to God, if you hadn't given me this woman, I would not have eaten from that tree. This is your fault, God. It wouldn't have happened if not for what you did. Have you ever blamed God in your life? I suspect most of us have. Have you ever used God as an excuse for your behavior, good or bad? Again this week we heard the horrific reality that 215 children had died and been buried in unmarked graves. They were buried anonymously. They were buried without proper burial rites. They were buried away from their families, their communities. And the question is, who is responsible? Who will take responsibility? Might this play out for we who call ourselves Christians? How will it play out for we Anglicans? There is a temptation to say, well, it was a Roman Catholic school, so it's their fault. The blame resides with them. I would suggest that we're all implicated in this. First and foremost, because we are all members of Christ's body. We are all members of the universal church. And we all participated in this together. So will we blame God, just like Adam did? It's easy to do. The Christian church has a, a notorious history in its treatment of indigenous peoples everywhere. And it's always been in the name of God, in the name of evangelism, in the name of ours being the only religion that counts in the eyes of God. Going so far as to say that anything else is demonic. We have driven ourselves to do ungodly things in the name of God. We have claimed superiority, and in doing so we have lost the sense of divine compassion and humility. Even though we are commanded to love our neighbor, clearly we have failed. Jesus' first call in his ministry was to repent. Often that word is seen as being a change of mind. Thomas More, a spiritual writer, speaks of repentance as being a radical change. As he writes, you don't just change your mind, you go from worm to butterfly. Are we truly ready to repent as a Christian people? Are we truly ready to work at reconciliation with our indigenous sisters and brothers? Will we take responsibility for the deaths of these many children? Amen. Please join me in our affirmation of faith to hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray. Empowering God, you gave the church the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit. Look upon your church today and hear our petitions as we pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
This morning, as we pray for all those in our church family, we think of Bishop Michael and in our diocesan cycle of prayer for the parish of Roslyn Marlbank, St. Paul's Roslyn, St. Matthew's Marlbank, and the Reverend Ken and Nancy Beale. Here in our parishes of Oxford, Kempville, and Merrickville, we pray for Reverend Andrew and Father Robert in their ministry with us and for all those who serve in so many ways across our communities. We pray for the members of the Sharing Table, the members of the Rideau Bridge to Canada, and others doing their part to support members of, of our community in a variety of ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Around the world, we pray for Lorene in Lebanon and Nirvathana in Sri Lanka, our children sponsored through World Vision, and for others sponsored by our church family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for so many nations on every continent whose people are experiencing inequality, civil unrest, and natural disasters. They live and work within systems that do not hear their plight. Bless the leaders of all governments, including our own. Give them integrity, wisdom, humility, and sound judgment. Help us to find our own tools to cultivate our own inner peace, that we can experience our own quiet strength and work with others for peace in communities and at all levels of government. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those struggling in so many ways as a result of our current pandemic. Strengthen all who find themselves in caregiving roles we thank you for the work of Jessica, James, Megan, Joanne, Emily, Dan, Trinda, Diego, Sally, Zach, Jinky, and Isla. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hurt and suffering are all around us and caused by so many forces. Some who suffer are known to us, others suffer unseen or in silence. Grant your healing to the brokenhearted and to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We think especially of Barbara, Anne, Lucas, Joy, Anita, Steve, Angie, Julie, Cindy, Franco, Bishop Michael Hawkins, John, Doris, Jerry, Joan, Joan, David, Sarah, Rod, Connie, Linda, Iris, Siham, Betty, Bishop Michael Polisell, Douglas, Sarah, Derry, Little Erica, Margarita, and Ryan. If there are others who are known to you, please add their names now so that we may pray with you. God, we thank you for your constant presence and all-encompassing compassion for all those who call upon you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are dying, and we remember with reverence and affection our departed loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that, gathered and directed by your Spirit, we may confess Christ as Lord and combine our diverse gifts with a singular passion conti to continue his mission in this world until we join in your eternal paradise. Amen. And now, as our Savior taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, 
Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and those whom you love now and forever. Amen. serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to thank you for joining me today uh, for our worship. I'm having troubles as you can see with my mask. Thank you for joining. Uh, it's been great to have you and to share this time together. I hope you'll join us again next week, uh, next Sunday, uh, June 13th. God bless. Have a great week.